Hey, well, good morning, kids. We're glad to see you this morning again. Not going to waste our time. We're going to jump in with the Life Church team and Jesse and get to start get started this week. Uh, hope you enjoy the lesson, and we'll see. Good morning or afternoon, evening. I don't know what time you're watching this, but I'm Jesse, and this is church. So let's go to worship. about Paul and Silas. See, they were in prison for preaching about Jesus. The Bible says these two guys were sitting in their jail cell singing songs of praise to God, which is crazy because they were in jail, when suddenly there's a crazy earthquake that comes, it broke the chains off their hands and it ripped the door open to their jail cell. See, there's power in praise, power to set people free, power to tear down walls. But don't take my word for it, you can experience it for yourself. As we praise, sing with all your heart to God. Let loose and give it your all. breaks my fall 
song is one of my very favorite songs. God's so good. God's so good. It's like I constantly need reminding that because he's always so much better than I thought he was. Um, this this week, our verse actually is, is all about his goodness. He, in, in James 1, 5, the Bible says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Seriously? I can ask God anything and he's not going to like get on my case about how I'm faithless or uh, I should know that or I can ask God anything? That's mind boggling. Doesn't it feel good to know that God's not going to be upset with you if, because you have a question about something you don't understand? So here's, here's what I want from you guys. What do you want to ask him? Write in the comments. Talk to, bring, bring your family. Are you watching this without your family? Get your family over here, this is church. So bring your family over and I want you to talk about what would you want to ask God if he was sitting in the chair next to you? What do you want to ask him? It's really shallow, but one of the first things I want to ask him is, why mosquitoes? Um, this episode is all about asking God questions, so let's go straight into it. What's up, Loopsters? We are taking a look at some of our favorite challenges here on The Loop Show. And in this episode, we asked a lot of big questions, and Jamie had to have some Vegemite. 
And because it was at the end of the Loot Show Survival Games. Check mm-hmm. out our playlist on YouTube. Um, but right now, for solidarity, I'm going to try some Vegemite. Now, Jamie, what this is like the worst thing you've had on Loot yes, Show, Yes, right? this is the worst thing that I've had by far. And I'm going to try it because that's friendship. All right. I love it. Let's go. Ready. Ah! Huh. Oh, no, not good. Ah, it's not no, good. No, no. Uh, please, okay, take here. That. Got it, got it. Oh. Okay, go watch the thing. Watch, yes, <laughs> go. Go and watch it. It's uh, so good. Uh, go watch the thing. Still watching you, Ricky. <laughs> Do I really have to eat corned beef hash from a can? Come join us by the campfire. Hang, Hang on, on for the loop. loop. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. I think this fire's fake. I really can't blame a guy for trying. This month, we've been learning survival skills to help us survive in the wild. And we've been learning some skills that help us in our daily walk with God. We've also been competing in the Loop Show Survival Game. <laughs> now, what we've been doing is we've been competing in different games, and the winner of each game got to choose one good treat from the picnic table of doom to put in their backpack, and one not so good treat for the loser's backpack. Jamie won one challenge, I won the other two. So now we're going to eat those things that are in our bags. Are you ready to eat what's in your bag, Ricky? I'd rather eat this cold marshmallow, but let's let's go for it. All right, the first thing that I got to eat after winning the compass challenge, the moon pie. And if you've never had a moon pie, it's chocolate, marshmallow, and graham crackers. Graham for short. You're on a first name basis with yes. it. <laughs> okay, we ready? Mm-hmm. Mission control. It's really nice. We have liftoff. Wow. <laughs> and if you've never had corned beef hash before, neither have I. So we're gonna experience this together. All right. Ooh, I think I can smell it. All Bleh. right. All right. Oh. This looks like vomit. I hate Vom- so many things right now. Um, I thought maybe. I- <laughs> All right. Well, we're just gonna go ahead and dig into this. You can hear it squishing. Okay. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. He's doing the only teeth technique. Did it help? Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh, I think it's going in the trash. Once you start to actually chew it, it reminds me of this one time. Mm-hmm. When I was at summer camp, uh-huh. and I saw a kid throw up uh-huh. everywhere. Uh-huh. There wow. We go. I'm impressed. There, there we go. Yes, everybody give him a round of applause. Woo-hoo. That was impressive. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Loop Show. <laughs> you know, it'd be better than that. What? Not eating this ever. At all. What is fire? What makes things burn? In this film, we're going to study fire, what it is and what it does. We know some things about fire already. Fire gives us heat. It cooks our food and sometimes provides us with light. Fire does a great many things that are useful to man. But fire can also be dangerous. Because fire can be dangerous, we'll study it in a laboratory where we can experiment safely. What do we need to make a fire? Let's try to find out. So fires need three things to burn, and one of those things is oxygen. Now, what's interesting is that there are some times where it can feel like our faith is burning bright, like this candle. And then something comes along, whether it's a thing that we didn't expect at school with a friend who does something that hurts us. Maybe it's a question that somebody's asking that we don't actually know the answer to. Maybe it's a verse in the Bible that just doesn't make sense. It's something like that that comes along and it takes away the oxygen and the fire stops burning. What happens is your faith goes out just like this fire. And I think it can be easy to freak out and try to figure out what do I do now? But what I I hope you realize is that 
you can ask questions. That questioning can actually bring oxygen to reignite that fire. You have permission to ask because God is bigger than your questions. And this isn't just something I'm making up because I like the way that it sounds. This is actually something that James, the brother of Jesus, said. He wrote this letter to the church in the New Testament in our Bibles. Uh, it's called James, named after Jesus' brother. And in chapter one, verse five, this is what James says to us. He says that if you need wisdom, ask our generous God. He's telling us that we have permission to ask. Then he says that God will give it to you. He won't rebuke you for asking. Now, what does rebuke mean? It's basically a word that means getting onto you when you do something wrong. So we've all messed up, we've done something that we weren't supposed to, and we had somebody who got onto us for it that said, hey, don't do that again. It wasn't good, it wasn't smart, don't do that. Here's what God won't do. He won't rebuke you for asking questions. What God will do is give you wisdom. Questioning will bring oxygen because God's wisdom is the oxygen that your faith needs to burn bright. But that's not all a fire needs. It also needs- Whoa, 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 whoa! Let's hold on there for a second. I'm the internet, but you can call me Webbles. Ha! I'm rarely the voice of reason around here, but before we go make giving you all the secrets for how to make fires, I just want to reiterate something. Fire is dangerous. You do not have permission to go starting fires every which way you want to. We're getting all scientific and making some metaphors. You do have permission to ask questions. You do not have permission to start fires. Yes questions, no fires. Got it? Just want to make sure we got that crystal clear. Um, okay, I guess, uh, let's rewind a little bit and, um, yeah, that's a good spot. Unpause! But that's not all a fire needs. It also needs fuel, just like this candle. Otherwise, it's not going to burn. And the thing about fuel is it's not always just going to show up or fall into your lap. You're going to have to seek it out. You're going to have to be active in order to find the fuel that you need. So let's check this out. What's up, Judo Bob here? And again, this is not your normal infomercial material. This time we're selling persistence and persistence to hunt. Some of you might ask, what is persistence? And that's a great question because I used to think, oh, persistence. Well, I'm not an assistant and I don't like purses. And does it have to do with my sister? Because I'm not a big fan of my sister. You know, by the way, Tiffany, sis, I love you. Don't, uh, don't kick me. Here's the thing that Judo Bob likes to do when he doesn't know a word he knows, he goes to the dictionary. And the dictionary definition of persistence is firm or obstinate continuance in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. Whoa. You know, I, let's, let's simplify it for those, you know, that might not know what that means. It basically means stick to it. You might even say persist, stick to it. And I know that's kind of a mouthful too, but you know, if you have a mouthful of ice cream, that's not a bad thing, right? Here's the thing, you guys, we can't passively wait for our questions to be answered. We have to seek out those answers like a hunter. And who doesn't want to be a hunter? You see these bad boys? Oh, made for hunting. Might as well be a fork and a knife. That's how I eat. It's the same thing if I want to crack a board, I don't just wait for the board to come to me. I actually seek out a board and I snap it. And you know Judo Bob knows how to snap some boards, okay? Thunder, lightning, you don't want this storm. That is persistent-ness. Mouthful, I know, but sometimes, you know, a mouthful of ice cream is awesome, even though you get a brain freeze. I hope you didn't get a brain freeze, but if you did and you want a recap of the lesson, numbers below, talk to my receptionist or my assistant or my persistent, which is what I sometimes call her. Judo Bob is proud of you for already uh, being persistent to hunt and persist stick to it. And uh, come to my dojo sometime, we'd love to see you. It's time to Vegemite. Yeah. And time for some shrimp chips. Well. Oh, hopefully this will be a nice little palate cleanser. So apparently people in Australia put this on their toast. Uh, like for breakfast in the morning and eat it. <gasps> it is yeast extract. Mm. Yes, it is Sounds. actually very nutritional, nutrition-y? Nutritionite. Um, ah, it's very nutritionite for you. Uh, so, yep, here we go. And I wanted to try to get the same amount as you got. Oh gosh, I don't know if I can eat that much. That is too much. I was trying to get the same amount that you got on you your- You can do whatever you want. Was it about, was it about this much? That looks about right. You can tell me right. the truth. I mean, yeah. So I'm going to try it. I'm not going to eat this whole thing in one bite because I might like throw up. So I'm just going to do a little bit. 
Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> the Play-Doh. This tastes like the Play-Doh. This place is really salty? There's so much salt in this. Oh my goodness. It like burned my tongue. It's, okay, maybe I'll, I'm gonna get it in my teeth Oof. if I do the Ricky method. Oof. Oh, Jamie, <laughs> I am so sorry. Uh, so bad. <laughs> oh man. Well, while you do that, let me try some of these shrimp chips. Okay. <laughs> you know yet. Yeah, listen, this is all on me. I don't know what I was expecting. It just smells like a big old bag of shrimp. Okay, let's try this. Surprisingly not bad. The smell of the bag is way worse than what the actual chips taste like. Some more. Mmm. You wanna try? No. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh! Ah, that's so gross! That's the worst thing I've ever tasted on the Loop Show. That's worse than the Play-Doh, I think. Treat number three. I have alligator beef stick. I have Larvette's <laughs> original worm snacks with an X. Now, what are the ingredients in yours? You have a cheddar flavor oh, one. Oh, yes. Ingredients, insect larva. Mmm. Well, mine says alligator beef. Flavorings. It smells pretty good. It just tastes like regular jerky. It's just good as is. You want? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to spoil your appetite. I get it. Yeah. Go for it. Okay, here we go. Larvette's original worm snacks with an X. Mm, it smells like an insect bag. They still have their little legs and their don't, little faces. Jamie, how have you not learned your lesson? Oh my gosh. Don't look at it. Talk me through it. What's happening? Uh, I just freaked out. <laughs> oh my gosh! It feels okay. like a worm in my hand. <laughs> Eat it really fast. That's what I did. That's what I did. Yep, it's gone. You did it. I did it. I just ate his butt. Oh my gosh! I'm just exhausted. The beef jerky was good. Mm -hmm. The shrimp chips were surprisingly good, but still taste the corned beef hash. So listen over to James. And um, let's go brush our teeth. So fire needs oxygen, it needs fuel, and it needs heat. And heat can be generated through friction, just like this. Can you feel the heat? Yep, that was hot. <laughs> uh, here's what's interesting is the fact that God created our lives to involve mystery, to involve challenges, to require questions. And what I hope as we've been learning this together that you've realized that questioning is a valuable survival skill for us to live meaningful lives and to better understand who God is and what that means for us. It's interesting because questioning, we learned earlier, brings in oxygen. But questioning also provides the friction that we need to create the heat that will sometimes reignite and strengthen our faith. Now questioning is not for the faint of heart. It requires asking, it requires hunting, and it requires listening. It's not easy. It takes grit to keep grinding until a spark is ignited. But that's okay, because even when the answers don't come easy or they don't come right away, you have the permission to ask. You have the persistence to hunt, and you have the patience to listen. So when you have questions, ask God, help me with this. And thank God when he gives you an ember that will ignite the flame. How do you deal with questions in your journey with God? Ask, you have the permission. Hunt, you have the persistence. Listen, you have the patience. Just like it says in James, God has wisdom waiting for you. He wants to hear your questions and he wants to watch your faith burn brighter. I think I finally got the taste of corned beef hash out of my mouth. Ugh. I'm never gonna get the taste of Vegemite out of my mouth. Oof. So Ricky, what do you do whenever you're wrestling with a really tough question? Mm. Well, um, I wrestle with it. Um, I go back and forth and I, I ask trusted friends. I see uh, what I can do in kind of 
make it become a discipline to just really prey on it. Yeah, it's weird because sometimes whenever we don't have the answers to our questions, we can feel hopeless. I know that there's been times in my life where God has led me down a road or my path has gone one direction that I didn't see it going in. And I just felt really hopeless at the end of it. And I felt like, God, like, why did you leave me here? Why? And I would pray to God and I would ask him, what's going on? What's the purpose of this? Where am I supposed to go from here? And he seems silent. Um, but the important thing to remember is that maybe he's silent, but he's there and he's not going to leave your side. Have faith that you are there for a reason and you have to wait until you do hear from the Lord. So that's one thing that I always hold on to is I remember that I'm not alone and that he's with me. Yeah, I yeah. mean, God gave us so many skills to survive everyday life. Yeah, skills like prayer, stillness, reading the Bible, questioning. Those are a couple that we learned this month. Yeah, and there are loads more disciplines that we can practice to grow closer to God. I feel like our survival skills got stronger too. Absolutely. Jamie, you have been a worthy opponent. You as well, sir. I had a ton of fun. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the ride. ride. Is it getting cold out here to you? Ricky, that's a TV. Yeah, but feel it's like radiating heat. It's oh, like, it is actually. Yeah. Huh. You have permission to ask God the big questions. God wants you to ask the big questions because God is big enough for your questions. What if the answers to your questions are right there in front of you? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are bigger than our questions. That like any good parent, you want us to come to you when we're struggling, when we're wrestling, and when we're doubting, and that when we do come to you, you are there to hear our questions and to provide us with the wisdom that only comes from you. Now, what I know is that for many of us, we've had questions, we've wrestled with doubts, we've struggled with the reality that sometimes life just doesn't make sense, and we don't know what to do with all of the challenges that we face. Uh, one thing that I do find hope in is the fact that God is bigger, that God's love is better. So much so that 2,000 years ago, God actually sent his son Jesus to the earth to live a perfect life and to die a brutal death as the perfect sacrifice for your sins and for mine. And when there are so many things in the world that don't make sense, I can find hope knowing that Jesus is there for you and there for me. That Jesus is the way for us to find hope and life and freedom in the middle of the mess that is life. And what I know is that for you today, God wants to invite you into a relationship with him. And the way is through his son, Jesus. And so maybe today what you're realizing is that you haven't had hope, but that's what you need. And what you realize is that Jesus is what you've been missing. And he is inviting you to say yes to follow him. So if you're in this room and you wanna say yes to Jesus today, then simply lift your hand right now. If that's you and you wanna become a follower of Jesus, simply lift your hand up and let's pray together, all repeating after me. Dear Jesus, forgive me. I'm turning from my sin. I'm turning toward you. I need your love. I need your grace. I need your mercy. I give you my life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. We are so proud of you for making that choice because following Jesus is the best choice you can make in your entire life. Before you go though, make sure you talk to a small group leader, to a friend, tell them about the choice that you made so they can help you better understand what it looks like to follow Jesus. Seriously, if you just made that decision to follow Jesus, I can't imagine how your head is swimming with like, what's next, what do I do next? Because it doesn't stop here. I bet you have a lot of questions. Uh, what we're gonna be doing for our Bible plan this week is, is a choose your own adventure. So go to this link on, on a tablet or a computer, your phone, whatever, go to this link and pick one. We, we've got Bible plans on, on worry and, and on baptism and on like just, we have all kinds of Bible plans. Pick one that looks interesting and, and go for it. Hopefully, by watching this episode, you're feeling some freedom to ask God questions about things that might seem confusing or unfair or whatever. Um, so seriously, like, write them down in the comments. And then once you're done writing it, go back to the other questions that are in there and write in there like, yeah, I had this question too. So all of church, we've been talking about questions. Now we got some more questions to talk about with your family. Here we go.
Hey kids, hope you enjoyed that. I want to encourage you to, to continue to think about some of those things you learned today. Hey, before we go, I want you to help me remind your parents that next Sunday we won't have a kids service online because we are doing a drive-in service at the church. So you can get the family, pile into a car, and join us next Sunday, Father's Day by the way, June 21st at 10 a.m. here at the church. And uh, tell your parents to look on Facebook or to look on our website or to check their email for details, all right? We love you. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Sunday here on the campus. God bless.